Ruins are a sought-after category of terrain for miniature gaming. In modern and post-apocalyptic settings, ruins often come in the form of derelict industrial structures, corroded pipes, fences, silos, and tanks, all left to the mercy of the elements. I came across this container of peanuts. It is the perfect size and shape to be turned into a piece of miniature terrain. In this video, I'm going to turn this container into a rusty industrial tank. This is the perfect project for someone who wants to practice painting rust effects. Let's get started on the build. I'm starting out with this peanut container. It has an aluminum bottom, a cardboard wall, and a plastic lid. I like the bottom of the container. It has a shape that will look good as the top of the tank. The lid and the bottom of the can are shaped to interlock for more secure stacking. This is a handy feature, but I will be removing the lid. I expect the paint to adhere to the cardboard fairly well. The metal could be a problem. Paint adheres to porous rough surfaces best. This aluminum is neither porous nor is it rough. I cannot make the metal porous, but I can try to make it rough. Some scrubbing with sandpaper should help. The scratches are shallow, but the sanded side definitely feels rougher than the other side. This aluminum dust cannot be healthy to have around. Do yourself a favor and don't blow this into the air. Just wipe it off with a tissue or paper towel. I applied a layer of primer to the can. This would look more interesting with some support frame strips, which I forgot to attach before priming it. Oh, sh**. I'm using wooden beverage stir sticks. A little bit of hot glue will stick these bits to the cardboard nice and tight. A handful of the stir sticks in the pack are warped. I can actually put these warped sticks to use. I can make it look like part of the support frame has broken down so much that it has snapped and is peeling away from the walls of the tank. Okay, now the model is fully built and primed. Metal industrial tanks and silos can appear painted or unpainted. I think that the heavy rust will look better if these silos appear to be exposed metal. I give the entire exterior of the model a couple of coats of silver paint. There are a few dried clumps mixed into the silver paint. They will actually improve the model by adding a little texture that I can later paint as corrosion. Iron rusts in the presence of oxygen and moisture. The amounts of these two things around and on the surface determine the appearance of the rust. Rust comes in colors ranging from brown to red to an orange-yellow color. Sometimes this corrosion is a single color, such as the red-brown rust that forms from high oxygen and atmospheric moisture. Picture the hull of a cargo ship or an oil drum left outdoors on the coast. Other times it forms in brown spots or orange-yellow streaks. 
This tank is getting two layers of rust effects. The first layer is a reddish brown. This will simulate the overall deterioration of the surface. The second layer is going to be a bright orange that represents the loose dusting that forms when a pool or trickle of water dries on a metal surface. These two layers will give the corrosion some depth. I am not brushing the rust colors onto this model, I am instead stippling the paint. To stipple is to apply the paint with jabs rather than strokes. Rust usually forms a speckled pattern as the metal surface develops pits and pockets. Stippling creates a similar pattern. This piece of spongy foam and this short stubby brush work great for this technique. The foam is actually from one of those cheap black foam brushes. It was starting to rip and tear after repeated use. Its time as a brush is over. Now it is a stippling sponge. The tools I'm working with to apply the rust today are creating a finer rust texture. A longer bristled brush is more difficult to control but can create a more coarse pattern. This is a previous build of the rusty tank. I used a longer brush to stipple the dark layer of rust. I like these bigger spots. It would be nice for simulating chipped paint. Avoid pushing or pulling the brush over the surface as that will leave strokes of paint. We want speckles, not streaks, especially for this darker shade of rust. These details are small, but a dead giveaway that the rust is painted. Ideally, we want to look at this model and believe that that rust is real. I'm concentrating the corrosion around the support beams and their edges. Rust will form where water flows and gets trapped. I can picture water flowing along the edges of the support beams during a storm. These spots will probably also be some of the last places to fully dry. Half of the tank will be heavily corroded, while the other half will be in better condition. When gaming, I can place this tank against another piece of terrain and spin it if I want to hide or show more of the rust. Now it's time to brighten this up with some orange. The orange rust goes over and around all of the other rust effects, but in smaller amounts. This layer is a dusting of color. I'm stippling the center of the large spots with more paint and almost dry brushing around the edges and the smaller specks. Earlier I said to avoid brush strokes when painting the rust this is more true for the darker colors as they usually contrast more with the base coat. You can get away with some downward streaks of this orange layer. Few streaks or lines of stippling will resemble stains created by water carrying the loose rust down the surface. Industrial tanks and silos are often made of galvanized steel, which is corrosion resistant. Emphasis on resistant. With enough time, the protective coating wears away and the metal rusts. This is my favorite part of the rust because it adds a sense of depth to the effect. The orange rust acts as the foreground of the effect and the red-brown rust is the background. In real life, a rusty surface is not two-dimensional. It is rough. It is being eaten away by the elements. 
I think this extra layer is key to separating good and bad imitation rust on miniatures. I could call it a day at this point, but there's one little thing nagging at the back of my mind. Some of the parts of the container were metal. While I did take actions to increase the paint's ability to adhere to these surfaces, I'm going to err on the side of caution. The model will get a few coats of watered down PVA glue to seal it in. There is no recipe here, just mix with water until it is really thin and apply multiple coats. And there we have it. That peanut can has been transformed into a miniature dilapidated industrial tank. This piece is an excellent addition to a post-apocalyptic scene. Zombies or scavengers would look right at home around these tanks. This was some good practice with rust effects. The tank has a lot of surface area for applying rust. It is also a low stakes project for experimenting with various rust techniques since the model took minimal work to create. This looks like an actual rusty can. At a quick glance, I would guess this was found at the side of a trail or in an alley. This project turned a piece of trash into treasure, but it doesn't look like treasure, it looks more like a piece of garbage found on the side of the road. But that's intentional. I kind of want to make some less corroded versions of this terrain piece. Guess I need to buy some more peanuts then. That is going to end another crafting video. If you enjoyed it, then leave a like. If you did not, then tell me why. But if you did like it, please feel free to tell me why you did like it. That's good. If you want to see more content, then dig your way to the subscribe button hidden at the bottom of that snack container. Thank you for watching. Keep making and keep playing. Have a good one.